first, throw in the flashbang grenades. We use those to shock the um, occupants of that building or that cave. Then, storm the caves. They'll say, move. His partner will say, moving. Move, move, move. Everything is quick and concise. You go in there and you flood that area. And it's all eyes, and you are looking for threats. You have people looking right, people looking left, people looking at the center of the cave. Go left, go right! In two seconds, that whole cave, that initial entry, is covered by at least four shooters. In just minutes, it is all over. What happens right after a mission like that? Ahoy has a fearsome reputation, nicknamed the Baby Killer. He wants terrified villagers into supporting him by cutting the unborn fetus from the pregnant wife of an informer. There just happened to be one woman in attendance at this mass named Maria Sabina Sway. So they asked her to carry out this rather dangerous mission. They enveloped the chalice in silk, wrapped it in a newspaper, and planned to smuggle it out. Sneaking through the church crypt, she carried her precious parcel beneath her coat. She had to walk through groups of armed soldiers. At any moment, they could discover her hidden treasure. Their moment came at a remote campsite. In the dead of night, one drove a knife into Duquesne's bedroll, thinking he was inside. He wasn't. The bedroll was stuffed with clothes, and Duquesne was hiding in the shadows with his rifle. Next morning, Duquesne ordered his African servants to bury the gold in a cave. He then set them free on the promise that they would never divulge its location. In such dense jungle, the role of the point man is crucial. It takes time to raise and aim the powerful but cumbersome automatic rifles. So the man leading the patrol carries a lighter weapon. The other innovation was that they carried shotguns. You'd see the enemy, maybe just a flash of khaki in the, in the bushes, and boom, you know, and you'd be almost certain to get it. To maximize their chances of finding Ahoy, the force splits up. Two troops, one led by De La Belliere, and the other by Sanderlands, head off separately into the jungle and begin their hunt for the enemy. At the dinner in Turin, Father Pfeiffer outlined his theory to Paul Bader, that the real face of God was no longer in the Vatican. Paul was skeptical. He had been warned of Pfeiffer's fantastical claims before. But Father Pfeiffer went further, claiming he knew where the real Veronica was now. 120 miles away, in a small town called Manapello. They ran the cords down through the basement and sat and recorded for six weeks. 
The transcripts from the eavesdropping operation reveal a remarkable piece of evidence. In these conversations, Dad is heard admitting to committing the Black Dahlia murder. He says, supposing I did kill the Black Dahlia, they can't prove it now. Steve believes the case is clear-cut. Out of the blue on Sunday the 13th of March 2005, Paul Bader was granted an extraordinary opportunity to see the version of the Veronica in the Vatican. Making his way into St. Peter's, he was aware that this could be the final piece of the puzzle. By dawn on the 29th of November, the siege is in its end game. There are just two terrorists left, and they are cornered on the first floor. In an intense exchange, the Black Cats fire a hail of bullets into the terrorists' position. Outgunned and outmaneuvered, the terrorists' deadly onslaught of murder and mayhem is finally over. <laughs> 